Heavenly Father, once again, we're thankful for your love and your grace. We're thankful for the finished work of Jesus on the cross of Calvary. Thank you for loving us the way that you do. You love us in such a way that no one can love us like you do. Thank you for the gift of grace. Thank you for mercy that does not fail. Thank you for mercy that does not fail. Thank you for your word and the ministry of the spirit in our lives. We pray as we look into your word, you speak to every heart today. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Before you sit down, shout a believing amen. Those in the gallery, I don't know why I can't seem to hear you well. Those in the gallery, shout your believing amen. Awesome. Praise the Lord. God bless you. You can have your seats. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I had a, I had a great joke. It was it yesterday, two years, two days ago. And someone says, I have no problem sitting with my ex in church. Onto the pastor said, turn to your neighbor and say, it's not over yet. <laughs> Glory to God. Turn to your neighbor and say, it's not over yet. I don't know what you're thinking about, but I'm thinking about the word of God. <laughs> Praise God. Glory to God. All right. Genesis chapter four. Genesis chapter four in verse 25. And this is, this, is, this is an extra for everyone that came today because like I said in the previous service, I didn't even know how this got into my spirit, but it got into my spirit and I believe that God wants to speak a word. And in every service where I spoke on it, it's just been a blessing. So let's read the scripture. This scripture, the Bible says this, let's read one to go. And Adam, and one to go. And Adam knew his wife again, and she bore a son and called his name Seth. For God, she said, and appointed me another seed instead of Abel, whom Cain slew. And the thought, let me read it to you my own way. You read this again. Let me read it to you. Let me read it. And God, and Adam knew his wife again, and she bore a son and called his name Seth. For she said that God had done it again after that that I lost. I, I love the way she put it. She said, I call him Seth because... King James says that for God has appointed me another seed instead. That's old English. The contemporary English is that and God has done it again. It's a word for everyone here that's lost something. Maybe you have lost a contract. Maybe you have lost a job. Maybe you were heartbroken and someone walked out of your life. Maybe you're divorced and you lost your marriage. Maybe you lost a pregnancy. Maybe you had a miscarriage. But good news to you today is that God will do it again. He says, and God did it again. I love that amen coming from that side. He says, and God did it what? Again. And God did did it what again and God did his what again I don't know what you're praying for I don't know maybe you lost your business maybe you lost your funding maybe you lost your papers maybe you lost somebody and God did it again and let me say this too quickly there's nothing God has done that I can't do again I, I know you're heartbroken because you lost it but there's nothing God has done that he can't do again did he do the marriage he would do it again did he do the pregnancy he would do it again did he do the funding he would do it again and guess what there's nothing satan can has done that god cannot undo uh, it seems as if only these people decide that catching it I, I, I don't know why i feel so much faith on this side i don't even feel that kind of faith from the choir side i feel it more here and, and, and God and, and, uh, uh, praise God wow I, I'm loving this side and God praise God and God did it again look at yourself and say and God did it again this year you are going to testify in many ways and say and God did it again the choir can sleep off I don't know if they are sleeping off but I can come to the pastor's side and God did it again and God did it again and God did it
I can imagine how Eve felt when Cain killed Abel. And she felt as if Cain killed Abel. Cain has been driven away. Abel is gone. I have nobody. Then all of a sudden she got pregnant. And she looked and she had the baby boy. And she said, wow. And God did it again. And God did it again. Our God is not a God of one time chance. He's a God of multiple chances. Whatever is lost and God did it again. Oh glory to God. Whatever has been taken and God did it again. I know you had a miscarriage but and God did it again. I know you lost the job but God did it again. If you believe in the gallery say amen. Praise God. That's enough sermon for today. In fact, I asked someone in the first service, I said, what did you get out of the service? He said, and God did it again. That was my word. And God did it again. Every time the devil wants to mess with you that it will not happen, just remind the devil. And God did it again. He's done it before. He'll do it again. Hallelujah. Genesis chapter 21 and verse 9, as we continue our teaching on healing from emotional trauma, as we continue our teaching on healing from emotional trauma, and God did it again, again, again. Nothing even has to be stolen for God to do it again. He can just show himself and say, let me do it. The next time you see me, I'll be telling you, and God did it again. Praise God. I love it. I love Jesus. Genesis chapter 21 verse 9. So, throughout this week, we have been teaching about dealing with emotional issues, recovering from emotional pain, recovering from trauma. And let me just explain what trauma is, just by an example. Um, some years ago, I was doing the prayer work at about 4 or 5 in the morning, just close by here. I was actually on Admiralty Road, and I bumped into a guy. Some of you that are old and just know the story, right? I bumped into a guy, and the guy tried to take my phone from me, and subconsciously, I didn't know why I didn't give him the phone. And I always put that there, because some of you think I didn't give him the phone. Phone, if a guy has a gun, and he asks for your phone, your phone is nothing compared to your life. That's why I always put that balance there. Subconsciously, I just didn't give him the phone. And the guy just took the gun and shot me. And how that gun, how that bullet missed me was just the divine grace and the favor of God. But where I'm going to is this. So for some days and weeks, it was like, I should not go anywhere. I should not go and pray in the morning and all of those kind of things. Because I would normally wake up around 3 a.m. to pray, 3, 3 a.m. to pay to pray. And uh, who? So one day I was like, no, I want to go, not because I want to go back to the street, but even in the daylight where there was nobody there, I was just afraid of passing that area. And that's what trauma is. What is trauma? It's that emotional response that you had from the first thing that happened that stays with you. So I went back to that place and I went back in broad daylight. I just walked back there in the afternoon and I felt all the feelings I felt at the same time. And that's what trauma is. Trauma is that thing that happens. It's an emotional response and it does not have to be real. So for example, I went back in the day. There was no robber there. There was no thief there. But I felt the same way and that's trauma. And the reason why is that it's not something on the outside that's making me feel that way. It's something within me that is making me what? Feel that way. For example, if you've seen people, if you've seen people that had maybe sexual trauma, maybe someone ripped them. In fact, I, I spoke with a couple recently, and um, when I spoke with them, the, the wife was saying that, you know, my husband just loves to tap me on the board and tap my boobs and all of those kind of things, and she reacts violently to it. And when she reacts violently to it, you know, I, I just pulled back, and I said, and they were discussing, and the husband said, what is there? She's my wife. Why can't I do this and this? And I just said to the woman, um... There's a reason why you don't do that. There's a story, right? And instantly when I said that, her eye back just filled up with tears. I said, there is a story. And I didn't even ask what the story was. But the question is this, and this is the question. I said, but well, have you told him the story? He said, he doesn't know the story. 
I said, the reason why is that every time someone does that tap, it triggers them to the first time someone tapped it and something nasty happened. And maybe it was an uncle that used to play with her as a child that way. And one day that child playing led to a rape. And in her heart and in her mind, it's always been there. It's always been there. And that's what trauma is. That's what trauma is. So trauma is that emotional reaction. It's an emotional reaction. It's an emotional reaction that triggers you. You, you don't have to even do it. It's subconscious. It's subconscious. It's subconscious. It, it comes out of you without even... You, you don't, when it's really traumatic, you don't even have to process that I want to do this. You even tell yourself, I don't want to behave this way. But when you go through trauma, you find yourself responding exactly the way you, do want to, you don't want to be. For example, have you noticed that a lot of people that grew up in an abusive relationship where their father beat up their mother multiple times said to themselves, no matter what happens to me, I will never beat up my wife. One recently, not too long ago, a guy came to me and he had slapped his wife. And when he came to me, it was the wife that came to report that he slapped his wife. But the wife did not come to report that the husband slapped him. He said, sir, my husband slapped me. He said, we've moved on, but my husband cannot forgive himself. He said, every day he cries that he slapped me. He said, even me that he slapped, I'm wondering that, is it more than this slap? So when I called the husband and I said, what happened? The husband said, Pastor, you don't understand. This is the very thing I never wanted to become. I'm becoming it in front of me. I'm afraid of who I am becoming. I made my dead mother a promise that I would never hit a woman. What made me? So for the wife, it was just a slap. For him, he saw the beginning of another pattern. He said, I didn't even know why I did it. I didn't even know how I did it. I didn't even know this and began to explain. And that's how that can be because trauma is an emotional response. So when trauma is not dealt with, watch what happens. When trauma is not dealt with, what happens is that you begin to repeat the cycle of trauma. And that's why you see some families, everybody's a single mother. Someone says demonic. It can be demonic, but let me tell you the truth. Some families where they are all single mothers, it's not demonic. It's just the fact that there's a trauma that all of them have inherited from their parents. And the parents come from the grandparents. And it has stayed in the family. And they have all these philosophies to help them think in a certain way. Glory to God. I say glory to God. Because once you have trauma, if you don't treat it, trauma is like a wound. If you don't treat it, it gets worse. You can cover a wound up with clothes. It doesn't mean you are healed. Mistake, sorry, lipstick does not cover trauma. Braids, suit, a man's suit does not cover trauma. If you are broken, you are broken. You listen, as soon as you start talking, then we see the trauma inside. And that's why you must never judge a book by its cover. Because some people are beautiful but broken. And some people are sick, tall, dark, and handsome. But they are broken, devastated. Their mindset has been totally shattered because of the trauma they've gone through. And the challenge of dating damaged people is this. If you date damaged people, they will damage you. And the challenge of being a damaged person is this. If you are damaged, you will attract damages. Give me my magnet. Oh, you saw it coming already. Yeah. You can just bring it the way it is. You don't have to put it on the. You can just bring it the way it is. Yeah. And this is what trauma is like. Trauma is like this magnet. Because some of you are wondering, some of you, let me tell you, some of you ask a question why do I always attract abusers? Why do I always attract terrible kind of women? Why do I always attract terrible kind of men? And the reason why you attract them because there's something, there's some unhealed emotional wound in you that as we are passing, watch this now, this, this is you, this is you. There's unhealed emotional wound. When you see people that are healthy and emotionally okay, you don't attract them. But as soon as you see people that are like are nails, what happens? You attract them. And you keep thinking that everybody's a nail. No, you are the one attracting nails. 
and and see what you do. You know, say eh, these these are bad people. These are bad people. Let, let, let me when I move to Canada, I will see good people. I will see good people. You don't understand. It's not about the place. It's about who you attract. So you move to Canada here. Here in Canada, there's just only one person. All the good people you don't attract. You see these good people you don't attract. You see these you don't attract. The only person you attract, Neil. You now come to a conclusion. This is how all women are. This is how all men are. Sir, this is how you are. This is how you are attracting them. And the reason why you have to heal, the reason why you have to heal is that until you heal, your attraction cannot be whole. Until you heal, those you attract cannot be whole. And let me say this quickly. Please, all of you, listen to this and listen well. If you don't believe anything or you want to do anything, hear this one. The biggest gift you can give yourself as a man or a woman is to heal from your emotional trauma. And the reason is this. If you don't heal, your children will suffer it. Because you will pass the trauma you have, you will pass it to them. And healing is a personal journey. It's going to take time. Healing is not overnight. It's going to take time. It's going to take some effort. It's going to take you putting some things. But it's a personal journey. And how do you heal? The first place you heal is by is by the as disassociating yourself. Don't say this is how I am. No, sir. This is how my trauma has made me. This is how I am means this is how I was made. This is how my trauma has made me has been. This is how I became. If it's what I became, I can become something else. Yes or no? That the, what does not make people heal is when they give excuses for that trauma and say, this is how I am. I'm just a selfish person. This I am. I don't show emotions. This I am. I can't love anybody. This I am. I just love women. This how I am. That is not how you wear. All those things you say are coping mechanism for your brokenness. Praise God. I said praise God. You are just saying those things because you are broken. When people have gone through trauma, they love to respond number one. When people go through trauma, they can freeze. I explained the concept of freeze, which is emotional freezing. Emotional freezing is this, and it's called, it can also be called emotional, emotional disassociation, where you disconnect your emotion from your person. You cannot feel. So people that say things like, um, I don't know what love is, what they are going through is that they cannot feel. They are emotionally deaf and dumb. So when they date someone and the person engages them emotionally, they don't know how to respond. They can have sex, but they can't feel. If you ask people that cannot feel, how do you know people that are emotionally deaf and dumb? Ask them, how do you feel? They will use the great. What is great? They don't know what great is. They can't tell you when they are sad or they, when they are happy. The reason why is that over time, they've learned not to pay attention to their emotions. So they don't know what emotion carries. And the reason why they do that is that over time, this, them not paying attention to their emotion is the way they cope with consistent emotional abuse and neglect. So because they had consistent abuse and neglect, they were like, there's no point paying attention because this thing will hurt me. Let me just detach. And that's why like those kind of people, if you can go behind the barrier and make them talk, the way they will cry. They know why? Because for the first time, they get to feel. For the first time, they get to feel. Glory to God. So let's go into the scripture. Genesis chapter 21 verse 9. Let's, let's go. The Bible says, and, and Sarah saw the son of Hagar, the Egyptian, which was, which was born unto Abraham, mocking, verse 10. I'm going to read faster. Wherefore she said unto Abraham, Cast out this born woman and her son, for the son of the born woman shall not be heir with my son, even with Isaac. So the, the background is that when Sarah did not have a child, Sarah brought, Sarah brought a help and told Abraham to sleep with him with a help and says they will have a child through the heir. Ultimately, Sarah had the child and Sarah just said, You know what? 
the child of my of my servant cannot be competing with my child. You know why I'm saying this? If you were Ishmael, how will you grow up? Knowing that you did not make that choice for you, or I put made that choice for you. If you were Haggai, that they begged to sleep with Abraham, that they promised you heaven and earth to sleep with Abraham, and all of a sudden, someone just says, that can happen. You have to go. And just imagine what Ishmael felt like leaving the house. And so why are you leaving the house? Because your stepmother said, you cannot become co-heir with your son, even though you are the firstborn. Because Ishmael was the firstborn, Isaac was the second child. I hope you know that. Imagine how unloved he must have felt. What causes trauma? One of the major causes of trauma is neglect. What is neglect? Neglect is, neglect is when you go through a phase in your life. Neglect is when your emotional needs have not been met. You have not been in the place where emotionally you feel cared for. I never said, were well, you cared for? I said, you feel cared for. I hope you know there's a difference between I'm caring for you and I feel cared for. Yes or no? So emotionally you feel cared for. Emotionally you feel heard. Emotionally you feel seen. Emotionally you feel connected. And let me say this quickly here. Marriages in our generation break up. Not because of financial issues. Because most of the time, partners in marriages are emotionally disconnected. And the thing about neglect is this. Neglect starts from childhood. When you see people that have experienced emotional neglect, they manifest in two ways. Number one, people that were not, they, don't, they didn't feel cared for, they didn't feel seen. Number one, they, they can be desperate for love. They can be what? Desperate for love. The reason why is that, that like people that are thirsty for orange, you give them orange, they will suck it dry. Suck it. So, if it's a man, the way it will be all around the woman, the man, the woman will say, have you not seen a woman before? But the reason why is that he's not used to love. He's not used to love. If that lady now speaks to another man, another man drops her in the office. Who is that man? Because he's so scared of being alone. He's so scared of some walking out of the life. And the reason why is that because they've experienced a lot of neglect, they never want to express it. So they become hypersensitive. And if it's a guy, if it's a girl, if it's a girl, before you know it, she wants to move into the house. It's not that she wants to move in. She just wants to make sure that no, there's no empty space anybody can feel. That any space in your life, I will feel it. So in your car, she has forgotten her shoe there. I said, leave my shoe in your car. Leave my shoe in your car. Ah. Not, not, not that you pick someone that they don't know you have a girlfriend. Leave my shoe in your car. Let it be in front. Let them... I'm not going to look at that. Leave my shoe in your car. They said, put in the boots. Why should it be in the boots? Do you want to hide the fact I'm your girlfriend? Hide it. Why are you hiding? Why are you hiding? Put it there. The reason why is that you just want to let, you want the presence to be felt even when you're not there. You will keep coming unannounced to visit the person. Because, because there's something you're hoping to find and I hope you don't find it. Praise God. But that's one person that has dealt with emotional neglect because of love. So they go that way. The other flip side is that some people are not hypersensitive. They just move into a free zone. You know what a free zone is? <laughs> I don't do girls. I don't do love. You know, when they date, um, they're the people that find it hard to call you anything when you date. You know, there are people that you date that they find it hard to call you something he said what are we doing mm. <laughs> your mind is going back to your last relationship eh? <laughs> there are people that when you there are people <laughs> there are people that when you date 
Let me just. <laughs> it's all this making me laugh. Stop laughing that way. Praise God. The people that find it most, the people that find it most difficult to define their relationship or who they are dating are people that experience emotional neglect because they don't want to be attached. They don't want to be attached. When you say my boyfriend, ah, uh, as grown as I am, I'm a boy. Okay, I'm my man friend. What what kind of name is that? What am I to you? You're my friend. But what do you tell people we are? Everybody knows who we are. We don't have to label this thing. And the reason why is that they don't want to be item. They don't want to be put as an item. And the reason why is that they feel as if if you put us in a box now, you would demand certain things emotionally. And I'm not willing to give you those things. Don't because once you say we are fiancé or fiancé or boyfriend or boy girlfriend. And I say, okay, what are we doing? We do everything else that everybody does. What are we doing? He said, you know what? If you want to define this, maybe just break the relationship. And let me tell you something. Some of you think they are time wasters. Sometimes they are. Sometimes they are just running away because they are not used to sharing their life with people. They are afraid that if I share my life with people, that I will be broken. They're just deeply afraid. So how does trauma happen? Number one, trauma happens. So trauma happens through neglect. The second thing is that trauma can happen through abuse. So trauma happens through neglect. And, and uh, you know, a lady was asking a question. He said, how do I? And when you have neglect, it shows up. It shows up. When you see people that experience, when you see people that love other people's validation that would displease themselves to please other people, most of the time, there are people that have had trauma experiences. And most of that trauma experience will be from neglect. The second area, so the second cause of trauma is abuse. Is what? Abuse. Abuse is not your father. It can be your father. That's part of it. But abuse is the different things you go through in life. Some of you, the reason why you have been scarred was because certain words were said to you that altered you forever. Mm. Fat girl. Fatty bum bum. Who will marry you like this? And they said such things consistently until the thing began to affect you. And sometimes... The most painful thing about the people that love us when they correct us is that in them correcting us, they shame us. And listen to me, you can love me, you can correct me, but you don't have to shame me. Hey! See how tall you are. Don't go yaru. And, and, and the person, and the person begins to feel somehow that Oh, I'm, I'm too tall. And that's why you say a lot of tall people, they just walk like this. Because, because they have been so shamed. Sometimes, one, one guy was saying to me, he said, my father, when he gets angry, just say, bastard. He said, he, he said, when your father calls you bastard consistently, he said, do you know how that feels? He said, you are never sure of who exactly you are. He said, you're never sure of who exactly you are. And many of you here, certain words has been said that has broken you. You are a victim of a lot of negative words that I said. And that's why you're struggling. And those words, and you know the, you know the thing about being a child? When you're a child, it's difficult to decipher between what is truth and reality. So, for example, now, if your mom behaves as if she's crying, you will think she's crying, you start begging her. Because you cannot tell between fake and reality. So, when your parents say words because they're in an emotional state, you are not able to decide and be like, oh, wow, this is reality and this is fake. And that begins to affect you. And the reason I'm saying so is that if you're going to heal from trauma, the first thing you have to do is to identify the source. And the source is abuse. 
And let me say something here. Listen and please. The most painful relationship you want to stay in are people that try to put you down continually. You know why? If you stay there, they will destroy your self-esteem. Either they do it consciously or unconsciously. Listen to me, eh? You can't keep listening to Goliath and win the battle. Everybody that listened to Goliath, they were paralyzed. It was only David that came on the scene that had not listened to what he had been saying for 40 that could take him on. Because the thing about a lie is this. A lie does not have to be the truth to affect you. A lie affects you as long as you believe it. So, if you have people that tell you damaging things, damaging things, damaging things, sometimes in the name of play, you know play, sarcasm, sometimes in the name of criticism, after some time, you will say there's something wrong with me. I've been noticed people that are very sarcastic can use big, very tough words on other people. If you use it on them, they don't like it. Yes or no? You know what they do? They use it to suppress people. It's a method of inverse self-esteem issue. There's inverse self Why Why you have a self-esteem issue, but you cover it with ego? Glory to God. Proverbs chapter 18, verse 21. So trauma can be caused by abuse. So how do I fix that? Proverbs chapter 18, verse 21. I want to take one comment. I'm really running in the service. 18, verse 21. I promised someone that would take a conversation in the last service. 18, 20. Wait, where is it? The back, Proverbs 18, 21. Can, you, can the microphone start moving quickly? Yeah. See what the Bible says. Everybody wants want to go. That are life and the power of the tongue. And they that. This is very powerful. You know what it didn't say? It didn't say the tongue is the fruit. It said death and life and the power of the tongue. It says, but you eat the fruit. The fruit means the experiences. What does that mean? What you say continually is a seed and becomes a tree. And you begin to eat of what it is. Why am I saying that to you? If all your life you have been saying that you're a bastard, you are useless, you are this and this. If you begin to talk differently, you will eat something else. So the reason why you are eating of a dangerous tree right now is that that's all you have heard. You are not beautiful. You are not good. You are not worthy. And all of those kind of things. Change it. What do you do? Others spoke to you and planted a tree. Speak positive words to yourself. Speak scriptures to yourself. Say things like, I am loved. This is one. Just put your hands on your chest and say, I am loved. Yeah. Just say it to yourself. Plant a new tree and begin to eat from that tree. Praise God. All right. So let me take that lady's contribution. Yeah. Go ahead. The lady um, on the fourth row. You passed that now. Just wave your hand so they can see you. You need to speak a bit louder so I can hear you. Okay. I just wanted to talk about... Is it, is it the microphone or it's hard? I can't hear nothing. emotionally damaged I have been. Yeah. I, I have become somebody who neglects other people's feeling. I have just emotionally checked out of for myself I do not want to have friends I try not to let people in my space I try not to go into people's space I don't see why people should be angry but I get be angry yes I and I get angry at people 
this has this has cut across all my relationships. Currently in a relationship and it feels like I just invalidate everything. I s How do you do that? I don't let him I don't let him get angry, but when I when I want to be upset I, I just go overboard. Give me an example. <sighs> okay. So he found out that I did something and he called me out on it and I just didn't want to say sorry. Just felt like no, I I didn't do it intentionally. So You didn't you didn't want to say sorry. So why didn't you want to say sorry? Because my son just says maybe I'm not wrong and even when he says I'm wrong, I just do not want to accept that I'm wrong. So, so when you're wrong, you finally had to accept you're wrong. Why do you do, why do you find it hard to accept you're wrong? I don't know if it's ego, if it's the fact that I have been like that over the years. And even when I even want to express myself, I talk too much. I begin to say things that I'm not meant to say. Like what? Insulting words. And this is not. So you're trying to apologize, but you end up insulting him. What are you asking this morning? I just want to know. I don't know. Is it, is it a spiritual problem? I have acknowledged this honestly. Okay. So you know it's a problem, right? Yes, I know. So the first step to healing is awareness. Something is wrong. The second thing is now to identify what is wrong. And we're going to do that just now. What are you afraid of? What's your biggest fear? I think I'm afraid of being what it is that it looks like I'm becoming now. What is that? I'm afraid of becoming a toxic person, but it looks like that's what I am gradually becoming. Mm. You're afraid, just watch, your biggest fear is to be afraid to become a toxic person. Okay. Why did you become afraid of that? That's a natural fear. Who is toxic, your dad or your mom? That's a big question. What? I said that's a big question. Yeah. I think my mom is somebody I have seen emotionally irrational most times. What I, give me an example. What has she done to you? So when you stay with your mom, what, what do you feel? She that overreacts when you do something to her or she invalidates why you should be angry. Give me an example. Tell me something that happened when you were a child. Okay, my parents are separated. Can, can you take your glasses off so I can see your face? Yeah. Shh. I, I'll tell you the reason why. Because our glasses help her hide. And she's used her glasses to disconnect from me. And I'm trying to help her. Yeah. Yeah. Take a moment. Can you talk now? Um, yeah, my parents are separated. My mom didn't remarry. I don't know why, but I think because she feels she's emotionally strong and she doesn't need anybody. Not like I've seen her with men, so she's just on her own. Just does things on her own. So how did all that affect you? Growing up with your mom, when you leave, when you make mistakes, what happens? She's insulting. Yes. So t give, me, give me a story. When you were five years old, seven years old, ten years old, you broke the plate. You okay. didn't come back from school early. She discovered you had a boyfriend. Um, what happened? Okay, my mom would not mind giving you a scar for doing something. Mm. She doesn't mind. So tell me one money. particular story that you know I can never forget this. Maybe because I got this car from it. What's that? What's the car? What did you do? On my finger. She, she threw. What did you do? Oh, okay. Because I beat my brother. <laughs> because you beat your brother. Yeah. <laughs> she threw the scissors that tailors use. She threw it at me and it almost hit my high. I just used my hand to block it. So it entered inside my hand. That's one thing. So I'm going to ask you something. 
if that's the tree you grew up from, why would it be different? Because it's not something I like to do. I just find myself. But remember, fruits don't determine what they want to do. Fruits are determined by trees. You don't pick orange fruits from an apple tree. So if your mom is a tree you grew from, what will you be? When you go through these breakups that you think that most of the time you cause, how do you feel? I feel like I, I'm, I'm not the problem. I feel like I'm not fault. What does that remind you of? Okay, it reminds me of an ex. No, when you feel as if I'm not the problem here, I'm not at fault. Who in your family does that remind you of? My mom. Do you know if your mom heard everything you said right now, she would think that's your problem and that's not hers? I don't know. Honestly. Do you think so? I'm just asking. Um, maybe because she doesn't accept faults. So sure. Maybe because? She doesn't accept faults. So because she doesn't accept faults. Okay, so the reason, so your question is that, what is going on? So the reason why that happened is because you grew from that tree and you're just replicating it. And what has happened to you is this. Let me also explain to you. I wish I could blame your mom, but I can't. You know why, you know why I can't blame your mom? Your mom seemed to me, from what you've said, like someone that has her anger and trauma issues and she poured it on her children. What do you think? You will hear her say certain things when you were young that will resonate. Why are you crying? Honestly, I don't want to be who she is. That's the only, that I feel is so much to be a different person. That's great. I love the fact that you've determined. So I want to ask you, who do you want to be? I want to be somebody who I think takes faults, who sees my fault first, who takes faults. What do you call that word? What? What is it? You want to be someone that is responsible for your actions. That take responsibility for your faults. That's what you want to be, right? Yeah, continue. I think I also want to be somebody who says the word sorry. You want to be quite empathic. But towards people that like you can also take blame for what you did. Yes. Yeah. So what is stopping you? Sometimes I always feel like I am the only one who should be. You what? And I said sometimes I always feel like I should be only I should be the only one angry. I feel like my what I feel, my emotions are greater They're right. than so so I will tell you what I think. When you're wrong, how do you feel? I feel like I, they say part of... What? I feel like they say part of the whole issue where I am right. So I just yeah. pick on that. Why do you think you feel that way? Maybe because I've never accepted that I'm wrong. Why don't you like to accept you're wrong? There's, there's something you're running away from if you accept you're wrong. There's something you're running away from. I'm asking you. You're the only one that knows the answer. Okay. For my relationship, I think because I think I don't cheat, because I think I am faithful, every other thing should be right. You know, let me tell you what I think. I think you're very afraid that if you know you are wrong, they will take advantage of you. Who did that to you? Did your mom, did your mom say they took advantage of her? Mom has her own story. I really cannot. And did she say she was taken advantage of eventually? I think if anything led to my parents um, 
separation. Not from your perspective, from your mom's perspective. Mm, yes. She feels yes. She feels feel as if she was taking advantage of. Yes. Do you see where her anger is coming from? I want to show you the root of her anger. Her anger is that they took advantage of me. So she trained you and said, never grieve for anybody. Because of what she'd experienced, and it's his perspective. And I told you something, a perspective don't to be right for it to be true. She feels that they took advantage of me. And because of that, she raised you and said, never grieve for anybody. Because they'll do the same thing to you. Say with me, say it's okay to be wrong. Hold the microphone to your mouth. Say with me, say it's okay to be wrong. It's okay to be wrong. That was difficult, right? You did see the laughter there. <laughs> like, oh yeah, like. The first thing is this, and I'll tell you, there's a big fear. There's a big fear. And the fear is that if I'm wrong, they will take advantage of me. And that's why, that's why you need to be right. And let me tell you, you're not the only one. There are people in this service that they focus on people's errors and forget their own. That's their own way. Have you not seen people like that? Do you have friends that they know everybody's problem, but they never know their own problem? Same syndrome. Hallelujah, my brother. So, they, and the reason why is that, let me tell you what they do. They distract themselves from their own fault by focusing on other people's problems. And the reason why is that they are very, you know why they are very afraid? And I'll tell you this way. Those people are very afraid because they are also very critical. So when people make mistakes that they want to tell somebody be crit critical. So they are afraid that the way I'm critical, if people know my mistake, they will criticize me. Listen to me. Two things. Forgive yourself. Take it easy on yourself. You are human. I'm human. I make mistakes. I get up and I move from it. I'm human. That's it. What's your name? Are you human? Yes, I am. Do you make mistakes? Yes, I do. Is that part of being human? Yes, it is. Is he okay? Yes, it is. So move on from it. The first thing you can do is while you're sitting there, like, take the mic from you, get on your phone and tell your boyfriend, I'm human, I've made so much mistakes even with you, and it's so hard to what? You're hiding again, right? That's your safe place, right? You know why? You, you know why you're wearing your glasses? How can someone like you have problems and discuss it in church? I'd rather hide my glasses. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay to be broken. It's okay not to be perfect. And that's the thing. It's okay to be broken. It's okay not to be perfect. It's okay. It's not good to remain that way. I'm walking through my own journey. You know the thing? Because you preach, everybody thinks you're perfect. Mm. The doctors that treat you need drugs. The pastor that preached need the message. It's okay to know that I'm human. I'm not perfect and I'm walking through my journey. Say with me, say I'm human. I'm human. No, just have, say I'm human. I'm human. I'm not perfect. I'm not perfect. I'm walking through my journey. I'm walking through my journey. I accept myself. I accept myself. And make the effort to be better. And make an effort to be better. And God will help me. And God will help me. He will. Come, let me give you a hug. Come. Come here. He will. It takes a lot to say that. It takes a lot. Strong people don't talk. Strong people don't talk. Strong people don't talk. Put your hands together until she comes here. Keep clapping until she comes. Keep clapping until she comes. Keep clapping, keep clapping. You have to keep clapping until she comes. Keep clapping, keep clapping. I can't hear you clapping. It's okay now.
How do you feel? She's literally shaking. Literally shaking. This is the first step of many steps of healing. Why are you shaking? She's literally shaking. This is the first step of many steps of healing. Thank you. Bless you. You can give it to him. Praise God. Let's stand on our feet and pray. I'm sorry, time is gone. The time flies like this. Oh. That got me teary. Mm. You know what I think you should do? Surround yourself with people that love you a lot. So I think you're too hard on yourself. I think you need to surround yourself with people that love you a lot. People that don't experience love are very, very hard. And they're very hard firstly on themselves. Yeah. They're very hard firstly on themselves. Put your right hand on your chest. And say, Lord, I accept your love. Say, I'm loved. I'm accepted in the beloved because of what Christ has done. I declare I am enough, full of love, full of his grace, accepted in his love. In Jesus' name, amen. You know, amen. Yeah. And when you say it, I need it to feel. I need it. Some of you don't feel. I need it to feel. I'm accepted. I'm full of love. I'm the, no, I need it to feel it. Praise God. God bless you. you can have your seats.